Hi, my name is David Benj, and I work on the Adobe at Adobe team as a product solution developer. This is uh, part one of three, a follow-up to my Mac session, um, where I'm going to be showing you how to create components using the ADEP CQ5 platform. Um, in part one, we're going to show you how to create an overlay component. Part two, we'll show you how to create a inherited component. And part three, we'll show you how to create a brand new component. So let's get started on the code. All right, so in this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to create an overlay component. An overlay component basically overlays the functionality of the base components that are installed by default in your CQ or WEM platform. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to go into um, your base install, and in this case, it's an ADEP platform. It might look slightly different than your CQ uh, welcome screen, but the functionality is the same. So. What we're going to do is we're going to start this out by creating a website web page. So we're going to go to websites. I'm going to go into the geometrics demo site. I'm going to go to English. I'm going to go to events. And I'm going to delete my previously existing Max demo page just so we can start over from fresh. All right, we're going to create a new page. We're going to name the page Max Demo. And then for the name of this page, we're going to pick Max Demo all in lowercase. Um, I don't like to use numbers, letters, anything special in the name because the name ends up being the node name in the JCR repository. And uh, it just causes problems long term if it has any kind of special characters in it. Or uppercase kind of makes a mess over time, too. Um, we're going to pick the default template, which is Geometrics content, content page. We're going to hit Create. Now let's go take a peek at this page. And I want to show you a demonstration of what we're trying to do here with the overlay component. So. If you look at the main website, we have this brand new page here. We're going to go into your sidekick here, and we're going to find a text component. Which is not showing up in the sidekick. So we're going to go look at design mode, make sure that the text component's on the parses here. So I'm going to the parsis of the main part of the page. I'm going to go in here and look to make sure that the text component is listed. And it's not. So I'm going to double, I'm going to click on the text component, and I'm going to include it as one of the possible components that can be dropped into this parsis here. I'm going to go back into edit mode. And I'm going to look at my sidekick again, and I'm going to find the text component. And there it is. So I'm going to grab the text component. I can drop it on the page. And now we have a text component instance on this page. That's great. Um, let's put some, just some cut and paste boilerplate in there. So we're going to go and copy and paste some boilerplate in there. Now we have a nice text component right here on the page. We also have a text component over here. And I'm going to go back to the main page and show you some text components on the main page. If you go back to the Geometrics home page, you'll see that there's also text components here and here. When you click on them, you'll see um, the ability to go into an edit mode. And in the edit mode, you'll see the rich text editor containing the text that's displayed in the page, along with the styles. <clears throat> and here you can go and change bold and you know, do your normal text editing type uh, tasks in there. Uh, so this is great. We have a text component that an author can use to drop anywhere, create new pages, and, and, and put uh, this text component on it. Now, what, what happens sometimes is, say, the, the stock component that comes out of the box, and there's a lot of them over here, um, isn't quite tailored to your environment. Marketing calls up and says, yeah, the text component's great, but everywhere where there's a text component, we need a, a gray bar on the top um, just to distinguish text boxes from the rest of the site. Um, so we need to go in and modify the text component to be able to show a gray box on top. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you how to do this demo using CRX DE Lite. Um, there's plenty of development tools you can use to do this, the same development work. Um, and if there's enough requests for it, I'll do a video on um, using other methods. But um, basically, uh, there, there's many different ways to do it, but the, the main ways are CX, CRX DE Lite, which is a web-based IDE interface. There's CRX DE, which is an application that runs on your desktop. Um, and then there's uh, Eclipse. You can use Eclipse to do the same thing. So we're going to go into CRX DE Lite. And we do so by going to our instance here. And we go to CRX DE. It's going to bring up the IDE interface. 
in the IDE interface, we see uh, some normal commands up here like save, um, revert, um, you can create new items, create a new node, file, folder, project, bundle, template, component dialog, a lot of nice wizards in here for the uh, JCR node structure. Uh, we have delete, copy, move, rename, um, and some other tools up here. <clears throat> Uh, one thing of note in the IDE is it's a web-based IDE, and every change you made, make doesn't get auto-saved. So you need to hit the Save All button a lot. And if you make an error, you can always hit the Revert also, which allows you to reverse your changes. Um, this bar box right here shows you the node path that you're at in the JCR repository. Um, this is rather handy when you get really, really deep into a node and you want to just you know, copy and paste that into some code. It's really nice to be able to just go up here and grab the node path and put it in. Uh, sometimes the node paths get really long. And then down here, you're going to see, for whatever node you've selected over in the, the node hier hierarchy over here, you'll see the properties window down here on the bottom. And it has the ability to add new items across the bottom here. It also shows you the access control for that particular node. <clears throat> so I'm going to start out by showing you the, the libs foundation folder. Whoops. So libs foundation. Under libs foundation is um, a, where most of the stock components are installed, the, the sidekick components are at. Um, they're underneath the components folder. And you'll look and you'll see a lot of great components in here that you can either inherit from or override in, in your system when you're building out a new site. Um, we have logo, the mobile footer, um, page, parsis, um, download, carousel, breadcrumb. I mean, there's a ton of uh, great things in here. So what we need to do is go down here. We want to override. Marketing said they don't like the way the text boxes look, the stock text box. So we could do the work right here and start editing the code um, just by editing the JSP, um, changing the icon, doing some stuff like that. And that would change all the instances of this text uh, component across the whole entire uh, in instance. But the problem with that is whenever there's an upgrade or a new version or a patch or any other change, um, they might change this. Adobe might make changes to this stock component, and therefore your changes will be lost completely. So a better way to do this is a naming convention that um, I'll show you real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up, and we're going to look at the apps folder. Now, the apps folder is where you do all your work. Um, and as somebody asked in my, in my session, there's a GSA search uh, directory here. And yes, there is a GSA search component. Um, it will be out in the share uh, fairly sh shortly. Um, so the apps directory is the directory where you do all your work. So inside the apps directory, um, by convention, if you create a folder called foundation, and then underneath that, you create another folder named components, and then, like I said before, save. Save, save, save again. It will save you. <laughs> um, so we have a, now we have a naming structure here that says Apps Foundation Components. If you go and look in Libs Foundations Components, if you look, it's the same path, except for instead of Libs, it's Apps. And what that does by naming convention is um, it will actually override whatever is found in the Libs Foundation Components directory. So if I put another directory here that matches the same names in Libs Foundation Components, it will override the behavior. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, app or we're going to go into libs foundation components. We're going to go down to the text component, and uh, I like I like to do it this way. This is the way I do it. But um, I go and grab the whole node. So I say copy, and I'll copy the text component node, and now I'll go back up to foundation components, and I will paste. I'll inspect to make sure I got all the components, the component uh, contents. Uh, you know, I have the component node, the edit config, the dialog, the edit dialog, um, the icon, which shows up in the sidekick, and then the actual text.jsp. This is the uh, entry point for the code because it matches the node name up here. This will be the entry point for the code execution. Um, all right, so um, looks great. So let's hit save all. And then we're going to go in and modify the code here. So like I said, um, text.jsp is your code entry point. So we're going to go in here, and um, if we look, it's a very simple component, the text component. Uh, it includes the global.jsp. This basically just uh, sets up some default namespaces and tag libraries for you to use in, uh, basic, in your components. 
Um, we include that in every component we build. <clears throat> now, in, in one of the tag libraries, it's a CQ text, and it's going to pull the property text out of the content node and display it in the page. Um, so we're going to change this a little bit and put a little uh, div around the top just to give it some uh, color. Let's see. And I have, of course, boilerplate code because that's the way I operate. All right. So what I did is I created a border, uh, a div with a border, a, a background of uh, gray, uh, black outline. Uh, text is going to be white, and I put the words overlay text component in this bar that goes across the top. We're going to hit Save All again. <clears throat> now, because we've created this, this, this overlaid component right here, when we go back to the main site, <clears throat> we should see that all the behavior of the main text components have been changed. And as you can see, every instance of the text component has been changed. We'll go back to the home page. It also has our overlaid text component uh, new behavior here, here, and over here. Uh, when you go back into it, you still have the, the edit dialog. Everything is working still. And everything's good to go. Now you can call up marketing and say, it's done. The site looks great. Go take a peek at it. You've now over, overridden the um, text component in any instance that it appears in the JCR repository or in your site. So now you know how to make an overlaid component in the WEM platform or the CQ5 platform. Stay tuned for part two where I'll show you how to do an inherited component. Thank you.